Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Before we start digging into the uh, computer, it's uh, good to know what we're going to be looking at so we can troubleshoot things. The S100 bus is basically the 8080 microprocessor bus uh, demultiplexed a bit and put on a 100 pin connector. So let's take a look at the 8080 chip and look at the pins that are available. Generally, you can see there's an 8-bit data bus, and uh, these two arrows show that it's bidirectional. So uh, these are input-output pins. And then there are 16 address lines, um, A0 through 15. And those are output only. So the chip is saying uh, where to point, and then either read or a write. The um, type of device that can be connected to this can also be either memory or an input-output device I.O. So there's also multiplexing whether you're talking to memory or whether you're talking to I.O. And some other strange things about the chip are voltages. Uh, you can see down at pin 20, uh, 5 volts, but the chip also has at pin 11, minus 5 volts, and at pin 28, uh, plus 12 volts. So this is one of the reasons also the S100 Plus also has a plus and minus voltages on it to, to support the old chips. Uh, there's a two-phase clock, uh, pins 15 and 22. Uh, so uh, a special clock has to be generated. And uh, Intel built a specific chip uh, to generate that two-phase clock. So now that we've kind of seen what's going on uh, on the 8080, let's take a look at a CPU card that plugs into the S100 bus and we can see kind of why the S100 bus was developed the way it was. The S100 bus was first invented for use in the Altair computer. Um, so this was the original Altair CPU card. Um, this page is from S S100 computers.com. Lots of great information here. And you can see this is the very first uh, S100 card. And uh, like I said, it was built for the for the Altair computer. And uh, at the center of the card is the 8080 computer and the connector at the bottom. The connector is offset to one side, so you can't plug cards in backwards. Um, plus 8 and plus 16 are on the left-hand side here. The, the minus 16 was on the other side of the card. It's a double-sided edge connector. Um, the address and data lines are brought out. So the way that the S100 bus is laid out is not for electrical engineering reasons. It's just to make this card easy to lay out. Uh, so some of the lines are a bit mm, hodgepodge and kind of interleafed with things they might not have should have been interleafed with. Uh, it's quite a noisy bus. Uh, so uh, the original designs had a lot of problems and that's why you see a lot of motherboards, uh, the backplane uh, in the S100, uh, being developed over the years, putting in interleaf grounds, putting in active termination to try to solve some of these problems. Um, but we can see uh, here, uh, plus 8 volts and plus 16 volts. Each card has to regulate those down. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, interrupts. So the uh, 8080 design supported eight uh, different uh, vectored interrupts. Uh, all of the address lines are brought out. And uh, one of the interesting things is that the data line is demultiplexed so that the input and output uh, are on separate pins on the bus. So it's not a bi-directional data bus. Um, and I think that's about it. A lot of these pins are quite uh, difficult to understand unless you really know the architecture of the 8080 and I don't think we really need to go into that right now. Um, I think the next thing to look at would be the front panel and how the front panel is going to interface with things. Let's take a look at the uh, CPU card, the in MSI MPU card. In the upper left hand uh, side here we see the clock generator, the 8224 um, generator. I believe it uses an 18 megahertz crystal to generate a 2 megahertz clock. It's a special 2 megahertz clock that is a two-phase clock with non-overlapping uh, signals. So uh, two pulses that don't uh, 
have uh, coincident edges. And the CPU is in the center. Uh, interrupt, hold. The three voltages that are required, plus 12, plus 5, minus 5. Uh, at the bottom here we see the 16 address lines and a, uh, uh, a bus driver. This connector is interesting. It's the eight data lines brought to a little connector. That's that small little connector on the CPU card in the upper right hand section that attaches to the front panel with a small ribbon cable. So basically the eight data lines are going to the front panel and that's used to take control over the processor and to insert instructions so it can insert two types of instructions it can insert a jump instruction or it can insert a no op instruction the jump instruction is used to move to a particular address in memory and the no op instruction is to do nothing and increment the program counter uh, allows you to step through memory uh, the A10 chip is a 8-bit port that latches the status of the uh, microprocessor. Uh, they ran out of pins and so the status lines are multiplexed on the data lines uh, and are captured during part of the clock cycles. Um, so interrupts and stacks and uh, IOs and uh, whether you're inputting or outputting uh, doing a memory cycle or whatever. Those are all uh, multiplexed off of the data bus. Uh, here we can see the data bus with its uh, uh, bi-directional bus drivers, uh, D0 through D7. And uh, they also have a, a pull-up resistor on those lines and that's to be used with that small strange connector that goes to the front panel. Uh, the default state is high and all the um, front panel has to do is to pull them below with open driver, uh, open collector drivers, TTL. And then the uh, clock signals go out as well. Some of them are delayed. This is the uh, front panel schematic from MSI, and it's uh, a little complicated. Um, it's mostly LEDs and switches with circuitry for buffering. Um, but then there's some complicated circuitry that's quite clever that allows you to examine and uh, deposit memory locations. Um, and I found a schematic online from the S100 computer website that uh, has a more cleaner version of this drawn with a bunch of notes on it. It's great. It's, it, it, uh, it's very good for explanation. So let's go see that one. Okay. Here's the schematic that I found. Looks like it was drawn in 2013. And uh, it's uh, very nice for educational purposes. So I think the front panel, the most uh, interesting things you see are the, are the LEDs. So let's, uh, let's zoom in on that. Um, first, the uh, 16 address lines are LEDs connected directly to the bus. So I finally remembered why I added that board inside the uh, S100 that uh, the MSI that I have is that I didn't like the idea of the LEDs being driven directly off of the bus. So I put uh, uh, tri-state drivers, uh, not tri-state, but they are um, buffers uh, to keep the bus unloaded um, and drive the LEDs directly. It allows the LEDs to be driven a little bit brighter, makes the front panel look better. So uh, when we take apart the MSI, we can take a look at what I did, what type of modification I did. But basically it adds uh, it adds buffers to these uh, LEDs that are normally just loading down the loading down the bus. So we have 16 address lines. Uh, we have status uh, uh, LEDs, uh, interrupt, stacks, halts, um, IO out, IO in, uh, memory read, uh, things like that. Um, so that's uh, that's most of it. There's an interesting circuit here at the bottom that pulls off uh, A8 through A15. And it's an AND gate. It's basically looking at the address lines and when it's FF, when the upper byte is FF, it, cr it, it creates the signal. And that's because the front panel adds two features. It adds an input port and an output port. 
it allows you to write to the front panel as an I.O. device. And you can write an 8-bit word to the front panel, and it's displayed in LEDs in the upper left corner of the MSI front panel. It allows also at address FF, it maps the uh, left-hand switches. So you can use this as an input device. So FF is an input, FF is an output. Uh, those are handled here on the front panel. Uh, let's see what we have over here. Um, there, these are the status, uh, I'm not the status lights. These are, this is the actual 8-bit uh, port that I just talked about. So this is an 8-bit latch. Uh, 8212s are used quite a bit back in the day. And this is the device at address location FF, um, not, not in memory space, but in IO space. Uh, allows you to write to these eight LEDs. Uh, there is a power switch in the front, which is 120 volts AC. That's brought directly onto that PC board, so be aware of that. Be careful if you ever have this thing apart. Um, and then we have an additional eight lines uh, of LEDs that are for the data bus. Now they do have buffers, so they're handled nicely. Um, and we have all of the switches on the front panel. We have the 16 switches, and uh, those can be used uh, to load and examine memory. Uh, this is the uh, this is that little uh, ribbon cable that snakes over and plugs into the uh, CPU card and allows you to pass data back and forth. And this is probably the cleverest part of the whole circuit. Um, it doesn't look like much, but what it's doing is it's uh, asserting uh, four of the data lines. And remember that the uh, CPU card had pull-up resistors, so the, no the lines are normally high. But if you assert this line, you can pull four of the lines low. And what that does is it pulls some of the middle bits, so you get an octal again. You get a 303. Um, on the data bus and a 303 is a jump instruction so if you want to uh, look at a particular memory instruction or a memory address you can hit the uh, examine switch on the front panel and it what it does is it stuffs a jump instruction over to the CPU so this is the jump and then the address uh, on these two um, switches so it's a three byte instruction. So it's one, two, three. Uh, jump instruction, high byte, low byte. Okay, over, let's go all the way to the other side. Uh, there are some switches. Uh, switch is single step, that's a momentary switch. Deposit, deposit next, that's a uh, momentary switch and examine, examine next. Those are momentary switches. Those momentary switches go into uh, monostable uh, pulse generators. So uh, they generate a clean pulse uh, for the step or for the deposit, deposit next. Uh, those go into some state uh, remembering uh, flip-flops um, and those uh, enable the um, signals to, uh, like in this case, deposit to uh, memory, or execute the no-op instruction, or execute the jump instruction. So um, those are easy to do. All right. Um, obviously, this, looks, this is looking for a particular instruction. Uh, puts the CPU in wait state. Um, and there's uh, a state flip-flop here allowing you to put the processor into a run state or a stop state um, and that's uh, also an LED on the front panel that says if you're a, a, in a run state or a uh, stop state and then there's a switch also for reset uh, you can reset the processor or you can exert a external reset and there's a as an or uh, diode in here so if you do an external clear it also does a reset um, I don't remember what the external clear is for I don't think I ever used it 
um, but probably for other devices on the uh, on the card. You can either reset the processor itself or reset the entire computer. Just a quick note about the uh, backplane or motherboard, whichever way you want to call it. Um, here we can see that there is some actual circuitry on the motherboard. That's not um, so common. Uh, some of the good motherboards are, uh, had um, this type of termination. Uh, what it did was to actively make sure the bus was being held in a, uh, a mid-state uh, so everything looked okay. Um, here on this board you can see a few regulators. There's a plus 5 and uh, plus or minus 12 I think they are. Um, there's also a additional circuitry uh, that uh, is for the active termination and below the regulators you see a bunch of uh, resistor packs and those are all 180 ohm uh, resistors pulling on each one of the uh, uh, active lines in a S100 bus. It's similar to this circuit that I found on a, a CompuPro. You can see that an intermediate voltage, well first of all uh, a voltage is generated at 5 volts uh, that's that's a stable voltage and then a resistive divider creates a second voltage uh, in the case of TTL this is usually 2.7 volts although in this particular design it's a bit adjustable but a 2.7 volt midpoint in TTL is sort of the standard that feeds a, uh, a buffer it's a one-to-one -one, uh, voltage buffer and uh, has output current syncing transistors to make sure it can handle all the current of the bus and it offers a very stiff uh, 2.7 volts. Off of that 2.7 volts are some capacitors again to, to quiet things down and then uh, one point um, it, it shows here two 270 ohm resistors but in the case of the of the uh, uh, motherboard that I have it's uh, 180 ohms uh, to each each one of the bus lines. So that's what it looks like. Um, in addition to uh, termination, most of the good motherboards also had interleaved grounds on all of the uh, pins of the bus. You can see here the interleaved grounds with uh, ground stitching to the back uh, ground plane. So it's very, very solid uh, ground shielding on all of the uh, S100 lines.